tenth of the twelfth, twenty twenty three, the year of misery. Paradise Now Church, Brisbane. Okay. I was quite surprised the other day when I heard the stats of suicide men. Uh, 60 men every hour. That's one, that's one a minute. Suicide. That's how bad things are. That's how we know, once again, it's the last days. Things are going downhill fast. The churches, uh, and those calling themselves churches of the Lord, um, they're going down fast too, subjecting themselves, submitting to the antics of the devil. And uh, so we have to stay on the ball. We can't go to sleep. We have to stay on fire for the Lord which is why I decided to bring out a new, a new card so that uh, not just the congregation can be reminded of that, but they can give it to people to, to show them um, some basic but vitally important, vitally important um, teaching that they have missed and that uh, will save their soul. On the back of the card it says what we believe. And uh, it's very clear. We don't believe what these churches believe. You know? We believe Jesus has a Father. So that cancels out the oneness. We believe that salvation has conditions, there's T's and C's. And that's vital. That's vital truth. Uh, otherwise, people get in there, uh, Jason recliner, uh, sin chair, and Jesus comes, and then they're, they're branded, see? They're branded... Uh, Foolish virgins left behind. Tithing is not an apostolic teaching. It takes away from uh, the leading of the Holy Ghost, I believe, and uh, it also um, doesn't just take away from the leading of the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't teach people to have faith and to move by faith. Yeah. What we teach is uh, you give from the heart. You don't give like a robot. You give from the heart. And I like to say, show me how big your heart is. Right? Are you prepared to go without? To show your gratitude? Or is it just, I give the leftovers? Or I, I give this, you know? We have to be in love with Jesus. Right? We have to be in love with Jesus. We, we can't afford to have him on the list. <laughs> Jesus can't be on your list. He has to be on the cover. Hey? Right? Gonna see my picture on the cover, cover of the Rolling Stones. So, what we believe is uh, there's no female pastors in the New Testament scriptures. I'd like to see it, but it's not there. And each of these have scriptures to back. The giving was Second Corinthians nine six and seven. Paul never spoke about tithing. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Peter, Jesus, he, he never uh, commanded or demanded tithing. So uh, the female path is 1 Timothy 3, 2, that a bishop, a leader, an overseer, a pastor uh, has to be the husband of one wife. 
That's not possible for a woman to be the husband of one wife unless she's lesbian. And, well, that doesn't count, does it? Not in the Bible. You know, the lesbian is the husband of some other woman, usually the one with the real short hair. Maybe the one with half the hair shorn off one side and short hair on, on the other side. And she's usually a bit more buxom and bully-like, you know. And quite demented. Uh, Christmas and Easter, not apostolic tradition. They, they render the Word of God void, Christmas and Easter, because they're traditions of men. They're not apostolic traditions. Not messianic tradition. And the traditions of men render the word of God void. They push it aside as if it's trash. The Lord told us, He never said, Remember my birth. He said, Remember the death, burial, and resurrection. We do that with the communion, don't we? But we also, I carry that with me daily His death, burial, and resurrection. And I carry it on my arm there. I carry it on my arm. Death, burial and resurrection. Jesus died for sinners, was buried in the grave and rose from the dead on the third day. Done that for the sinners. This is, it says, Paul says it's written. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. So, um, Christmas and Easter. Easter, tradition of men. Not in the scriptures. We carry about the death of Christ within. Daily. In other words, it's not an outward show. It's not an outward showing. You know, go toddling down the street with a cross with a wheel on it. <laughs> and it hasn't been oiled again. It just comes straight out of the cupboard. And uh, some are cool oil, you know. But they're not biblical. See? When they say that, you're, you're not of the world. You're in the world, but not of the world. And then, of course, eternal hell fire. Those three words go together beautifully. Like three peas in a pot. You have your different demonised denominations, you know, the J-dubs and seven-day... Oh, God wouldn't do that, you know. It's not eternal, it's not fire, it's a junkyard outside of town. But uh, we believe eternal hellfire for unrepentant sinners. That's churched and unchurched. Revelation 21.8. No, no backtracking. You know, like Israel Folau done a bit of backtracking. His discernment is very blunt, of course. He used to be involved uh, with Alan Jones and now it's all come out. It's been said, I'm not saying this, it's been said Alan Jones uh, is a predator. Now that's very strange because I've watched Alan Jones on various occasions. He's a radio announcer and a... Um, uh, What else has he You've got? Alan Jones, yeah, chat master and broadcaster, radio announcer. And I can't be sure or not whether he's Roman Catholic or one of them, Anglican or something, but uh, I thought there's something about that blunt. You know? I just don't like that blunt. I don't know why. And here it is this week, he's groping the boys. You know, the young men, I mean, young men. Alan Jones, Mr. Millionaire, helping out uh, Israel Falau. I wonder if Izzy knew that. I don't know. He might like a bit of Island Boy, who knows? Hey, do we want the truth? Is there a man with a backbone in the country to call a spade a spade? Or are we just going to tiptoe to it? I better not say that. 
Oh, what would they think? No, no, we need some men around the place. A lot of males, but very few men. I can't find many at all. I look hard. But I see a lot of men pushing prams, you know. Well, that tells a story on its own, doesn't it? Right? You go back to the 70s, you see women pushing prams. You never, I never seen any women in the 70s wearing dresses or things like that. I mean, they might have been hidden, but it wasn't a proud thing. You know, it wasn't a proud Mary looking for a job in the city. Or roll it on the river sort of thing with Tina, the trader. But, um, <laughs> you know, the old story of grew up in the church. Well, I like the way they put it because it's true. They grew up in the church. The church. They didn't grow up in Christ. They grew up in a church. You know? Like gay Sebastian, I mean Guy Sebastian, grew up in a church and then seen the break in the traffic and the dollars were waving. Oh, off we go. I ho, I ho. Hey, it's off the seas that we go. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with Mr. Alan Jones, he used to have a lot to say about a lot of people. But now it's been said. I have to make that clear. It's been said that he's under investigation for predatory behaviour. Not good. Eh? Solomon Island. Um, well, before we go there, I just want to backtrack to um, uh, the minute man. Every minute a man suicides, it doesn't need to be, you know. Uh, a lot of us have been on the edge, as these men have, but Jesus came on the scene. Tender plant at a dry ground came and rescued me. Hey, from me. That was my biggest problem. Oh, terrible. Terrible Paul. Um, Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands. Well, they're, they're for sale, aren't they? You know, the behaviour. Well, the islands themselves, they, they quickened some time back that they, they would be good postings and, and positioning for wars around that might have something in for Australia. So then they're now utilising the dollar. I thought it was very embarrassing, really, <coughs> that the Solomon Islands are playing the field, China and Australia, you know, and of course, uh, in their ignorance, They've allowed China to buy them, just like a prostitute. They've allowed China to buy them. And I tell you what, it's going to be a big mess. Because in their ignorance, they, they really believe China was there to help them. And they found out already they're destroying the place. Look, China, they only want that place for an army base. Air Force takeoff pad, but uh, they sucked the Solomon Islanders in, and uh, they knocked up a stadium in uh, Honiara. A million, listen to this, a million dollar stadium. A million dollars is nothing. A million dollars these days is like ten thousand dollars in the seventy. It, it's nothing. Knocked them up a stadium. <laughs> and Honiara and for a million dollars but you know pushing uh, Solomon Islands pushing Australia aside. 
But how much has Australia given the Solomon Islands in aid uh, in, um, in cash or in other means? Uh, I think it was 2002, it was three billion in aid. Now, does that compare? You see the generosity of Australia. And then you see the stingy, whingy, tightwad China with their million dollar stadium. And the Solomon Islands fell for it and now they're crying because they know they've made an agreement they, they can't do nothing about. And if they tried, look, China would just... <laughs> they got enough people in war uh, uh, warheads and um, equipment to just wipe the island out without even going anywhere. Just one missile would finish it, sink it. And they don't know what they're going to do. And it's the same with the other islands, whether it's New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, Samoa, um, Tongan. They all want the money from Australia but they don't want to be told. Hey? How can that work? I oh, don't tell us what to do, you know. We about give us the money. It won't work. But Australia it dishes it up. They dish it up to the Muslims in Indonesia, and they dish it up. And that's why the world they're laughing their heads off. They want to hand out. Just go to Australia. If they don't give you a, a residency, just stay in detention till they have to let you out. You know, it's a joke. They've made a joke at the government has made a joke out of the country. It's disgraceful. Right? So it can only get worse as every, all these the nations are setting up their posts, their their war posts, right? Until everything's strategized and arranged, right? And we're all built up. Let's do it. The missiles will start flying and then all the, the technology will come in and shut everything down and you can't see much in the dark. <laughs> and it'll just... I just hope that I'm not here when it manifests. So I'll just keep eating my curry pies and drinking my Dr Pepper and I should get a quick exit, don't you think? Uh, I said on the news the other night, you've got to be there for you, this is a, a, a cliche, you've got to be there for your, peop your people, our culture, our traditions. Now, if they think that's great, you've got to be there for your people, our culture and our traditions. Well, you see the difference with Jesus? He's there for everyone. Right? The door's open. But you see, can you see the racism in that? Right? The racism is looking you in the face. Your people, our culture and our truth. Our. No, the, the, Jesus doesn't have culture and traditions and our, our. It's him. It, it's just Jesus. Right? There's no human culture and no human tradition uh, in, in, in the uh, quotation, is there? Jesus said, They're my brother, sister and mother who hear the word of God and do it. Doesn't matter who you are, whether you're black, white, whether you're retarded, genius, High society, low society. They're my brother, sister and mother. And there were a, a, a congregation of licorice all sorts. Right? That's what I like about Jesus. You know, he says, come on. If you're going to do it my way, well, we can get along. But if you don't want to do it my way, it, it's never going to happen. I will have our... 
Jesus, we do it half your way and half my way. No, that won't work either. Because he's number one or number none. Cliff Richards brought out a, a uh, Sandy Season song, a Christmas song. Cliff Richard, the singing icon from the 60s. And it's the heart of Christmas, it's called, but he, the words in there are, the heart of Christmas is Jesus. I mean, how dumb can you get? As if Jesus would have anything to do with Santa Claus and selfishness and reveling and drunkenness and uh, hypocrisy. <laughs> he, he has nothing to do with that. The heart of Christmas is Jesus. No. Jesus got nothing to do with it. One in six children. We're in Australia. We're talking about Australia here. One in six children in Australia are in poverty. You talk about, oh, the third world. This is the third world. <laughs> I prophesied that in 2001. And it, it comes back to the roots. Then it comes back to all the religions and all the beliefs and traditions and cultures and it's all good to go. Where Jesus, he wiped it all out. Right? He wiped the race, the colour, the, the, the cultures, traditions. Nothing to do with it. Because he said to the Jews, he said, don't you give me this stuff that you're, you're the sons of Abraham. He said, that doesn't mean Jack. And then you have Nicodemus. He said, do you reckon you're the sons of Abraham? The children of Abraham? He said, well, what do you want to kill me for? Right? I asked many churches, churched people that. What are, you, what are you banging on at me about? You reckon you love Jesus? Well, what are you attacking me for, you clown? Get out of here before I start praying. Right? What are you stabbing me in the back for? You reckon you love Jesus? Right? You don't love Jesus. Don't even know Jesus. Yeah, so one in six children in poverty. Followed by, because of the poverty, mental sickness and physical sickness. This is in Australia. You know, it's an illusion that people think that Australia, you know, is this rich country. And everyone's going to become wealthy. That's, that's a dream, man. You're in a pipe dream. Forget it. It's not going to be. Right? You've got the working poor in this country. <laughs> Even in the third world, you've got the poor. But here, you've got the working poor. Right? They're working. They work around the clock here. Hard jobs, you know, difficult jobs. With mentally sick people, children, you know that have no discipline at home and they're sent to childcare and they run riot. And they punch the workers and everything. And, you know, and they're still battling to put a roof over their head. And struggling to pay the bill. But here, here's the Labour Party. Here's the government sh shoveling millions and billions out. Right? out of the country and they're blowing it up the wall. Pauline Hanson the other day, uh, Pauline Hanson, the Queensland Senator, asked the, the Parliament, they said, I want to know, uh, could you tell me, uh, it, has the, there been an independent audit of Aboriginal uh, government provided Aboriginal funds to the tune of hundreds of millions. Has there been that audit yet? And you know what old Pauline's like. How come it, you know, is anything being done yet? And they said, no, next. And that didn't even give her any kind of an answer. Hundreds of millions. They're just, the government just doesn't care. 
you know. That it's got no idea. The government's supposed to be there to utilise the funds of the taxpayer. The government should be there with an eye to see where the money's to go and who's most needy and, and uh, you know, making sure that businesses are, are paying their taxes and that the, the super rich are there to helping those who are minimised. They're not doing that because they don't have the ability to do it. Because all the blind people of Australia, they're always voting for clowns from Clownsville. And they put them in and uh, nothing's done. Anastasia Palaszczuk, she's there. Uh, like all the other premiers of Queensland, uh, lining their own pocket. Buying up the real estate and uh, promising they're going to do wonders with the bag of eggs and the stew, and nothing's being done. The children are still running riot. Two girls, it's on the news this morning, on the radio, two girls, uh, I think they were about 15, they had this list. They've stolen three cars, they've broken into five houses or something, they've bashed people, they've attacked the police, they gave chase to the police, they smashed up some cars, and they've done all of this, and they're still running the streets. Now, if the police and the government can't bring down two 15-year-old girls, <laughs> I tell you what, what, you need a squat team to bring down two 15-year-old girls. It's pathetic. It's a joke. Right? It's the last days. Lawlessness will abound. Right? And the love of many will grow cold towards the Lord Jesus. Because they'll be thinking in their ignorance, they'll be thinking, Oh, why didn't he do something about it? Because he's the one that does the impossible. And this country's not doing the possible because they're too bone lazy. Simple as that. It's easy to push it under the bed. It's harder to take a stand, isn't it? And say, this is what I believe. You know what I mean? This is what I believe. Like it or lump it. There it is. Hey? You don't like it? Well, move on, Charlie Brown. If you don't like it. Because that's the bona fide truth. The truth will set you free. And I tell you, I'm free to be the servant of the Lord. I'm not bound to no government. I don't get no government handouts. Hey? They're not paying my way. They can stick their money. I don't need it. I need the Lord. <laughs> he provides for me for the last 36 years. Make that 36 uh, and a half. Or nearing, anyway. 37 years in June 24. So, uh, you know, I know in whom I've trusted and in whom I believe. Right? And so, um, yeah, the old government, they're not doing much. They tell, you know, oh, we're going to do that, all the party policies, but when they get in, it's all party. Old Albo, he can't, uh, you know, he can't stop getting on the planes. And all hell's broken loose at home. Right? And he don't want to know about it. He just likes to get on the plane and have his first class dinner. While families are living in parks and tents in this humidity. Think about it. And, and imagine the variety. Just imagine the variety of, uh, of people, the character of these people. I mean, you, and there's no way you can put any um, 
crimp safe on your tent, is there? <laughs> you go out to work and your tent's sitting there. It's, it's fair play, isn't it? It's horrifying. Hey? Horrifying. I seen some children the other day on the side of the road and they were selling uh, some sort of drink, cordial or something. There's about four of them, four or five. And I come swinging around the corner and they're all, hey, trying to flag me down. Anyway, I pulled up, I said, how's it going, fellas? And they said, oh, you want to buy a drink? I thought it was the little rascals. <laughs> I said, don't worry about the drink. And gave them a bit of coloured paper and said, you have a good day, fellas. You know? And they're all standing there, you know, who was that masked man? And so that was good. I felt real good about that because they've got a backbone. You know, they're not lazy things. They're not having to put it in the lap. They're out there with a, a cardboard box with a, with a jug and some, I don't know what they had in there, but, uh, and paper cups dishing it up, you know? And one's got the sign flagging people down and it's got it written on there something, I don't know, but they're, and they're having a cry. I'll, I'll back that any day. Right? McDonald's are on the hit list for class action. They're going to go for $100 million, which is only peanuts, peanut shells to them. There's a class action against them, uh, hundreds of thousands of workers. They're not being paid what they should be paid, and it works out to the tune of $200 a week per person. The overtime and all the rest of it, and they don't pay them overtime, and if they complain or anything, they threaten them. And it's on for young and old. But I mean, McDonald's, uh, they might be a bit broke, because they only made two billion last year. Hello. They only made $2 billion last year. Hey? But they can't pay their workers. I don't, I don't know, I can't get my head around it. You might be able to work it out. Hey? Well, I finished my whinge for the day. Let's go into the message. We always start in Psalm 2, don't we? It's all about the gap. We don't want to uh, be associated with um, amalgamating with the world and the churches of the world and the one world church. We stay at distance because there is a gap between the wide road and the narrow road. There's a gap between Jesus and Caesar. Right? That's it. And we stay our distance. We just stay in, uh, in, in, a, in uh, contact with them to let them know the bona fide truth. If they want to, maybe they would decide to enter the door for their own soul's sake. Psalm 2 1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath, his anger, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. 
You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O king, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. But blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Hey? What do you think of that? Verse 10, Now therefore be wise, O king, be instructed, you judges of the earth. We can see the judges are not being instructed by the Lord. The judges of the earth. The magistrates. The government. They're not the police. They're not being instructed by the Lord because if they were, they, you would see laced, laced, through the community and the nation and the states, you, you would see the manifestation of Romans 13, 1 to 7. But it's not there. I can't see that. Every time I see the youth violence and, and the disorder and uh, people manifesting uh, everywhere you go, I had a pregnant woman abusing me the other day. And she jaywalking a child. She was an island woman. And she just started on me. I'm on my bike and I'm riding down through the shopping centre. And there was a zebra crossing. And no one was coming across. And I got a bit further on. And this woman got out of the car with three other people and she got the child and virtually ran just about to get in front of my bike and I didn't slow down so she had to pull the child back and then I turned around and she's yelling and cursing she said you don't want to watch where you're riding I said no if you had a brain you wouldn't be leading your child into oncoming traffic jaywalking in the process. Right? And this woman's pregnant and she's raising a fist. I thought, man alive. Right? What are we dealing with? And then it was only five minutes after that, I'm parked across the road and the boyfriend or the husband saying, oh, stop it. Come on, let's go. Don't worry about it. What have I done wrong? I'm just riding along. And then next minute, this woman leads a child into danger, into the front of a vehicle. Well, I was zipped under Yui and parked under the tree sort of thing in the main street there, in the Orion shopping. And I'm sitting there for about 15 minutes waiting for this park. And I, seeing the woman was going to pull out, and I turned the bike over. Next minute, this car comes along with Africans in it, four-wheel drive, and they're eyeballing me. And I thought, oh, you want to have a shot too? And then I'm trying to get in, and the woman left, and I went in, and it was rage, and started on me again. I said, shut your mouth and ping off. Bottom line. Go on. Be gone with you, you ugly thing. I said, I was here for 15 minutes and you come zipping in in your four-wheel drive, a heap of junk, and you want to get the park. No common sense, no brain, you know? Pushy, I don't like pushy people. If they think they're gonna push me around, they got another thing coming. I don't give a rat who they are. I don't care if they're six foot four and weigh 245 or they're midget, doesn't matter. <laughs> if they're black, white or brindle, they think they're going to push me around? I tell you what, I'll stand my ground. I'll stand my ground in the Lord. I don't put up with rot, especially from pagans. No rot here today. I might get a shirt done. Don't start your garbage. I don't put up with rot. I like that. Hey? Signed, Disciple of the Christ. 
And speaking of rot, in Psalm 2, He who sits, Psalm 2, 4, He who sits in the heaven shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. That's the, that's the saviour I follow. What? Hey, tell me. Go and have a look in Israel in Gaza. Do you see any distress? Do you see deep displeasure there from God? Or oh, great blessing. What do you see there? Do you see the Lord holding them in derision? Hey? Do you see the Lord in the heavens laughing? Oh, oh my, my God wouldn't do that. My Jesus is not like that. Oh, get out of here, you ugly thing. Your Jesus isn't, but my Jesus is. Hey? My Jesus is like that. I'm proud of my Jesus. I'm more proud of my Jesus than I am of anyone or anything. Even more proud of them, my mother's son. <laughs> hey? Had the Lord put in my hand. There's no struggle. There's no sweat of the brow. I'm, I'm born again. I'm born of God. None of this bit. Struggling and wrestling. No. Never been that way since I've walked with Jesus. So it's been lap service. Okay, nine cars and second, two motorcycles now. The Lord provides where the Lord guides. He who sits in the heavens is going to laugh his head off. Why? Because of the garbage they talk. Oh, let us break their bonds in pieces, cast away their cords from them. And the Lord starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Let us do this. We're going to come against him. We're going to bash him. We're going to do this. Oh, just do it. You know, give me a testimony. I haven't had one for a while. Make it good, you know. Bite one of the ears off and, you know, slash me throat. Makes good photos, you know. You say, has your pastor had this treatment? Well, he's not a true pastor. Can you say amen? Oh, we don't want any of that. We don't want any of that sort of behaviour. Because, you know, we're religious. No, no, no. I, I hate stinking religion. Sandy seasons, rabbit seasons, tithing, and Kenneth Copeland with his garbage teaching, drinking human blood now on the altar. He's cutting himself and someone else. Oh, let like Indian givers. You know, Indian givers, Indian givers. Love and then doing the carry on. He talked to Sister Elaine, should be able to get you onto the video. This is a sort of tribe you've got to put up with in the last days. Right? You know what? That's just a, a prep. They're just prepping the minds of the people for the cutting of the calves to come in the temple with the Jews. It's all preparing the minds. Yeah? That's what all the unity, all oh, come together you know, uh, with the Beatles and Paul McCartney. It's all coming together. We all want, we are one, but we are many. <laughs> it drives you nuts. You know? all, everyone whinging about Oh, racist. And, and, you know, you've got to be inclusive. You can't get talking about the homosexuals like that. Well, there's so many wimpy people today. You, you, you say one thing and they, they want you in court. No backbone. They've got no spine. They've got no in, integrity or grit. They've got nothing. The people today. How will they stand? Right? The slightest thing said, oh, it, it's as if they're waiting to pounce and, and say something, you know? I get it when I walk into a shop. I walk into Woolies. 
you know, and, and it's sort of like, it, it, it's like a leopard waiting to pounce, you know, on a field mouse or something. It's just unbelievable. Hey? Oh no, you can't, can't get served here with some butch checkout chick, you know. Everyone loves her because she's got a purple strand in her hair. You know, it just makes me want to go bush. Hey? Get a hoochie and go bush. Get some ration packs. Oh, look, don't, I don't live for food. I eat to live, I don't live to eat. It don't bother me what it is. Hey, dry ration. If the water's hot and there's no Pepsi, stiff. <laughs> it don't matter. That's not, my, that's not my joy and glory. Jesus is my joy and glory. Hey? Oh, hallelujah. I'm so tempted to find someone that helped me build a log cabin, you know. Yeah, you can have dirt floor, just throw the mats, get some old mats, throw them on the dirt. Oh, I'd love that. I would love it. This, uh, the Lord provide me with a, a block of land. That'll do me. Bit of a dam there or something. Boil the water. Hey, get the billy out. And let them all rot. Let them all go to hell. Love it. Plenty of handout places around. Right? I say, oh, yeah, you know, are you on Santa Lane? No. Haven't got a dollar. This is what this joint's about, isn't it? People who don't have, well, dish it up. <laughs> hey, just stuff it in one meal a day and then go more. Right? Once a week, have a treat, esky with ice, and a few cans. Can't do better than that. I mean, that's living the dream. So, let's go on to the message today. We're reading in Psalm 119. It's all about the gap, isn't it? It's all about don't. Close the gap. Keep the gap. Keep the distance. Hold it right there. Who goes there? Come out from behind that grass. From that bush. You know? Uh, We've got to stay our distance. Stay in touch, but stay our distance. Psalm 119. Outside the gate. Hebrews 13, 13. Outside the gate. Psalm 119, 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimony, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You, you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I, <clears throat> when I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimony. As much as in all riches, I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with me. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see. Wondrous things from your law. I am a stranger 
in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul breaks with longing for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud, the cursed, who stray from your commandment. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Princes also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counsel. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your word, on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of your the way of lying, and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth, your judgment I have laid before me. I cling to your testimony. O Lord, do not put me to shame. Psalm 119, verse 32. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. May me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies. Incline my heart to your testimonies. and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. That's where we left off last week, in 38. Uh, today's 39. Turn away my reproach which I dread, for your judgments are good. And only the Lord can do that, can't he? Hey? Only the Lord can help us at the end. The strength of man is very limited. We have to, we're forever asking the Lord. We're forever calling on the Lord. Whereas the world they take it into their own hands, you know. The world takes things into their own hands. And that's where the trouble starts. Yeah! I mean, it's not going to solve anything. When we rage, when we have this rage, or maybe it's racism, or maybe it's jealousy or hate, or you're not having a nice day, so you decide to take it out on someone. That's the world. But we're not like that. We're the people of God. Right? We know that the Lord will sort them. We know that vengeance is the Lord. We don't have to get all bogged down with people jumping up and down. The world don't know if you do things the right way with common decency and respect, the day's going to go better. Your life's going to go better. Everything's going to be better. But throwing your weight around will not change anything. We can scream and yell and throw our weight around and you know, stand over tactics. It won't last. It, 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 we will meet our water loom. It will come. The old live by the sword, die by the sword. We have a different sword in the Christ. We have the word of God. Right? Which sealars us and says, hold it. Sealar means 
hold it right there. Pause and meditate on this. And we have the sila of the Saviour who in situations says, hold it right there. We're not going anywhere. We're not changing anything by doing, behaving like this. Chill. <laughs> you know? Uh, calm down and remember Jesus. <laughs> The world doesn't have that. We have that. We have that. The arguments, the yelling, the screaming, the, the, the vengeance, it's not of the Lord. Right? Turn away my reproach, which I dread. Right? And do you want to go out and have a big drama scene tomorrow? Do you want to go out and someone's banging on you tomorrow? You know? I, I don't want that. I, I, I don't live for that, you know? I, I want to go out tomorrow and mind my own business. I, that's where the peace is. And my business, I don't like to use that word business, but my business is to help as many people as I can. With the least effort. Hence, that would be help as many people I can through the Word of God. Hey? But the world can't help me through the Word of God because the world don't have the Word of God. They have help, but it's temporary help. They might be able to give you something to eat, somewhere to sleep. Change your clothes, maybe. Shower. But that's not going to change what's going on inside. That person still remains violent, or that person remains angry or resentful or racist or whatever. They, you know? And so, um, once again, we count our blessings one by one. How blessed are we? That the Lord has shown us another way. Jesus says, I am the way. And not only that, he's the truth. And that's where the spout of life comes out. That's where the gushing waters of life spray all over us. They're, oh, we're going to have a script shower. Hey? Have a rice paper shower. Oh, hey? Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Oh, but the mercy drops are falling. But oh, for the showers we plead. Eh? Showers of blessing through the Word of God, through the Lord Jesus. And all combined, and we mind our own business, all that sort of thing that I encounter during the week, you know, different people, they don't mind their own business, and they're not even looking after their own business, but they don't mind their own business, and, you know, sort of like you're put in a jury, you know, in a court, and what about this, and what about that, what, oh, whew, I'm tired, <laughs> you've wearied me with all these questions, mind your own business. You can be nice and say, has anyone ever told you to mind your own business? And they say, oh, no. Well, they say, I am. Or, anyone ever told you to mind your own business? Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you again. Say, so you obviously haven't mind. mind your own business. You know, it's hard enough to keep my own yard organised. It's hard enough to keep my own house organised. And, and my own life right. With the master, instead of poking my nose into other people's business. Hey? Yeah. Turn away my reproach, which I dread. He can do it. He, he, he can detour that stuff. He just put up a sign in the spirit, and that, you know, the people are coming to attack you next minute. And they just detour. I've seen that. I've seen people. I've seen the scripture. Alive and living in my life. And a guy was coming across the street with, with a broom handle. 
to hit me over the head in the valley. And the Lord uh, turned away my reproach and the police come around the corner. Perfect timing. Two policemen and he's sort of like and frozen. And I just seen the police, you know. I got presented and and as the police are talking to him, what are you doing with the stick in your hand? I'm still preaching. You see that? That's the Lord's doing. That's not my doing. That's the Lord. I was all geared up and prepared to take the crack, you know. Oh yeah, another testimony, a few shots, you know. <laughs> oh, you got to get the one with. Make sure you got that side of the head where all the skin's taken off. You know, don't forget me nose, permanently broken. And it just spells out, I love Jesus. You know? <laughs> Not hiding in some temple somewhere on a hill in Chile. Or, or you know? Or Wakamadumia up in the mountains. And, you know? Say, oh, he's holy. Really? He only eats once a week. And he wears orange. The orange people. Does a bit of martial arts to protect himself. But really? I thought the Lord protects. The Lord guides. Turn away my reproach which I dread. For your judgments are good. We don't need to say any more. I'll stop judging. Don't judge. Right? Oh, stop doing good to me. I don't want you doing good to me. Don't judge. You're so judgmental. No one's going to come to your church. We don't judge in our church. And most of our time on Sunday is music. Oh, gee, I tell you. You wonder why a man drinks. <laughs> not, that I, not that I drink uh, alcohol of any format. Not even Shandy Andy's. I don't drink Shandy Andy's. I reckon if you're going to have a beer, drink the blinking thing. Okay? And have a dash of tequila in there too. Get it down. That'd be a Sheila. Okay? Shandy. <laughs> Cold beer, hot day. What's the drama? But I'd rather be a better witness and say I was a man that could not go without an hour without a drink. But today, I'd rather have a cup of tea or a dry ginger ale. That's what I prefer, or ice cold water. I'm not biting my nails, thinking, oh, I better not have a drink. Oh. No, free. If the Son of God has set you free, there's, there's no shandy about it. There's no Andy Pandy. There's nothing. Eh? No hanky panky. There's none of that. It's all gone. Because you're free. Huh? I'm free to do what he wants every old day. You know? Free to do it the Lord's way. Free to be the servant of the Lord. Delivered. Eh? Set free. That's what... The testimony is. I was that, but now I am this. Oh, well, I understand, Paul. It's, you know, it's the sandy season. I understand you're getting drunk and punching on in the pub there. The only reason why the fights come is because I don't take garbage. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I keep my mouth shut and suck it up in the pub, well, it's all right. But if you say your P's and Q's, it's on. And I didn't mind that back in the day. I thought that was fun. <laughs> Even though I got a flog it, they still knew me as a guy to have a crack. <laughs> That's back in the 70s, if you had a crack, you're yeah, okay. Yeah. As long as they know. 
you know, they're not going to get away with it free of charge. That's the, that was back then, but now, oh, look, I don't even bother, you know. I wouldn't bother wasting my time. Turn away my reproach which I dread. And it's a pain, isn't it? Right? All the drama. Who wants them? Right? Unnecessary. It's in the turmoil of the world today. The nitpicking. And, you know? Gossip and nitpicking and creating trouble and hardship for others. Who needs it? You know? I wonder about people like that, you know. In a difficult world, they live in this difficult world, and, and people are the smallest of things. Nee, nee, nee. Oh, shit. <laughs> Go away. You know, grow up. Grow up. See, you know, it comes back to one thing, Calvary. You know? It comes back to Calvary Hill. Jesus hung on the cross for low life sinners. Just lowest form you can find. Human sinners. He hung there for us. Now do you think he, oh you know, it's my rights. Oh, they've done me wrong. Oh, what? Are you for real? As if Anyone on earth is entitled to be recognised as doing right. You know? What happened to Jesus? There's a big barney over some little thing that the person done. When someone does you wrong, you, you look at it. I'm sitting on my motorcycle in the shopping centre in the street. And that woman started on me, pregnant woman with a child, Jay walking in front of a moving vehicle, my motorcycle. And as soon as I seen that, the moment I seen it, I thought, this is all about Jesus. This is what's going on here. I'm a blessed man. I said, look, go away. I don't want to hear about it, that's all. I don't want to hear it. You don't even have a case, woman. Hey? Do you raise in a fist, a woman raising a fist at a man, well, that's... Uh, a woman yelling at, abusing a man in public. Uh, a woman leading a child, a pregnant woman leading a child into oncoming traffic. Not across the zebra crossing at all. And the zebra crossing was about five foot away. Uh, wrong, 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 wrong. So I'm sitting there laughing to myself, thinking, this, this, this woman hasn't got a leg to stand on. You know? But I, I didn't go down there to, to, to get into that sort of thing. You know? So... I go home and uh, I say, Lord, turn away my reproach, you know. Um, turn away my reproach, which I dread. I, I just dread it, you know. And a, a, a peace maker and a peace loving person, man or woman, would dread it, you know. People banging on about nothing, you know, or picking on someone because they're having a bad day. That's the world. And we don't want to behave like the world, do we? We want to stick with the judgment, the good judgments of the Lord. We stick with them. And when we see people like that, we see them for what they are, ignorant, argumentative, ignorant, angry, resentful, and the list goes on. Right? Disrespectful. You know, when 
women start yelling at men, it's disrespectful. I don't care if the man's a pagan. According to the scriptures. But raising a fist, a woman in public, raising a fist at a man. And how much more a minister and a follower of Christ. Tell you what, that, that's trouble. Not for me, for her. That, that's definite. So, I'm believing the Lord will, you know, help me there. And deliver me from that rubbish. For his judgments are good. And the Lord is one that discerns and, and, and he'll judge whether he can work something with reproach. Whatever the reproach, whatever the situation if it's going to be to the Lord's glory or, and it's going to be to the person's benefit, uh, forward slash Job, forward slash Paul the Apostle, forward slash John, uh, boiled in oil, uh, I like this this one's final word for your judgments are good I, I know I rely on the judgment of the Lord what does he think of the situation what can he do there well I got a warning from the Lord through that situation I got a, a, a big warning uh, and that warning The situation served to me, you know. The situation served me. Uh, and reminded me of Psalm 2. Okay. First one. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Kings of the earth said to themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. He's talking about the world and the worldly people. Because it starts off the nations. And then he says the people, they, they're plotting vanity. And then it goes on in Psalm 2 2. And you can be assured the rulers and the judges and the police would favour the woman. They take counsel against the Lord's judgment and, and the anointed of the Lord. See? And then that goes on to say, let us break their bonds in pieces. Thing. It's just Neanderthal stuff, you know, caveman. Uh, 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 truly, you know, caveman. Bash, bash. Let us break their bonds in peace and cast away their cords from us. Yeah, I hope you do. I hope you cast the cords, but I don't want nothing to do with them. Hey? Right? But the judgments of the Lord. Hey? For your judgments are good. If the judgments of the Lord are good, why do so-called churches rage against people that judge in the house? Why do they rage against them? We, 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 we've concluded the world rage against the judgments of the Lord and against the Lord's people. Okay? That, that's what I see. The spirit in that woman was raging against the spirit in me. It's as simple as that. See? You've got the, the darkness and the light conflicting. As I said, 
the zebra crossing would have been as far as the air conditioner is from me. But no, sin would not permit that woman to go there. Laziness would not permit the person to go to the zebra crossing for the safety of the child where she would not uh, have had to abuse me. It's common sense, you know. You hop out of the car, you go onto the footpath. Car, onto the footpath. You toddle down there and go across. Oh no, straight out of the car. And, ah! Everyone wait for me. I'm pregnant. Yeah, well, so is another million out there. And we've got to contend with it daily. The rudeness of people. Praise God for his good judgments. Right? When I was set on fire, that was good. That was good. Because God sent it fit to let it happen. And it was good. <laughs> it was good. It's very beneficial for me. Oh, dear. And uh, let me say, let me say, uh, this one here who believes that he is, that's who he's speaking here, the one that, it's a he in just above verse 33, he in the Hebrew, God is, he is, and he, he's proving that, isn't he? He's manifesting that in 39 and all the way through from 33 to 40. Okay? Your, judgments, your judgments are good. Verse 40. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. Hey? The, we, can, uh, we can revive ourselves. The world revives themselves with holidays and bubble baths and, you know, rainforests. And they, they, they go up there and they get leaves and that, rub them on their head and they put pumpkin seeds on their eyes or something, you know, cucumbers and, and then they massage them with turtle wax or something. All that stuff. And they're, and they're reviving. But it stops there, the flesh, you know, the flesh. And some go to retreats, you know. Marionettes or whatever they call it, the Roman Catholic, and they have retreats and, and treats with the retreat, and it's wonderful. And they're revived while they're there, but they can't afford to stay any longer than three days because that blew the budget clean out of the water, and they go back home. And they have to face the day. Oh, wanna face the day. Da, da, da. Because nothing been done within. See? Has to be done within. Forget the holidays. Forget it. I know, without a doubt, that revival for me, we didn't, my wife and I didn't holiday in New York. We didn't holiday in Vegas. We laboured in the Lord and it was so reviving. It was so re refreshing, you know, all day and all night. Sometimes we get to bed at two in the morning after recording and doing this, doing that. And uh, that's where the, the, the reviving is. Revive me in your righteousness. Now, uh, 
revive me the right way, but the precepts are involved. In 40 there, behold, I long for your precepts. You see that? You've got that combination of, of God's uh, righteousness and leading. We see that in Psalm 23, don't we? We just zip back there for a tick. In Psalm 23, and we see that. Right? Look, he's the know-all. He knows everything, Jesus. He's omniscient. Right? Psalm 23. Okay. And, uh, and the verse is bzz, uh, 3. He restores my soul. See that? And leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. See, he, he'll get the glory for his name's sake. But you see that paths of righteousness? Revive me in your path. In your Word in the narrow road and double emphasis, behold, I long for your precepts. Hey? Oh, what love fills the pages as I ponder on the writings of my God. And we're pondering that and, and we're rejoicing because He's not going to lead us. In a bad way, the judgments are good. You're going to lead us in the paths that are right. right? And it's going to restore. It's going to restore us or revive us. Our soul, our mind, our will and our emotions. That's what the word does. The world don't have that. There's a great gap between the world's remedies and the Lord's remedies, right? The world's medicine and the Lord's medicine, right? There's a lot of difference. The Lord's remedy does a thorough job, thorough lasting job inwardly, which is seen outwardly by our... Uh, concept of life by what we do in life and the way we handle things and do things in life right? in the world they've got a problem they go and get drunk at the pub and it makes it worse because the wife uh, hypothetically speaking has cooked the dinner and now it's cold and she got a manifest so he thought he solved his problem with drinking down the pub, but then he goes home and then the wife is not happy because it's a cold meal, which is right, rightly so. And then she's jumping up and down and then he starts to defend himself because that's what uh, unsaved people do, try to defend themselves. Whereas the saved leave it to the Lord to justify any man and woman is quick to justify themselves. As people have said to me over the years, oh, you know, so are you a good father? Are you a good parent? Are you a good minister? Do you think you're good? I said, that's not for me to say. You ask my children. You ask my children. And whatever they say will be closer than what I can tell you because man is quick to justify himself. And if you want to know what sort of minister I am, you ask the congregation. And then in, in so doing, uh, I'll know whether they uh, know what they're talking about or not as well. <laughs> I tell you, the narrow road is a win-win. It's an undefeated road to take. People can bang on and bring it on. And they can do what they like, but the Lord puts a smile on your dial and says, Look at this, look at this, look at this. And he pinpoints it and says, they're not right. They're wrong. They've got something against you, son. <laughs> they're holding something in their heart against you. That's why they said that. And that's good. You know, because you know what you're dealing with. You know. And then you can just slap them up the head in the spirit, up the side of the head. No, 
uh, he restores my mind, will and emotions. Okay? This is after he's, he's done that other work with the reproach. It, he's turned that away. And, uh, and given good judgment, right? he, he's dealt with it graciously. And uh, here is this one longing uh, to hear more of the word. And uh, we led in those paths, and you know, we we should have the right view and take the right perspective on being led in the paths of righteousness, because you know, it shouldn't be about self, but it should be about um, him, as it says in Psalm twenty-three, three, for his name's sake. See. We've got to understand that. It, it's for his glory. It's for his name's sake. But the world is oblivious to what I said here this morning. I can guarantee you. The world is oblivious. They don't know what I'm talking about. They would not know what I'm talking about. And uh, it would mean nothing. Because they're on another road. You see? Yeah, yeah. If I'm travelling down Johnson Street and there's something going on in Brown Street, uh, I'm oblivious to it because I'm travelling down Johnson Street. Yeah? And I'm oblivious. And there might be a big drama scene going down, but I'm oblivious. I'm on another road. Right? And so we choose the narrow road there is a gap. Don't let it tighten. Don't let it come together. Keep the gap. The, the, the thing that uh, makes the gap initially is, is the Word of God. That's what the Word does. Jesus came not to bring peace, but division. He came to set a man against his uh, and a woman against their mother and father and daughter and children that's pretty heavy and those of your own house will be your enemy those of your own house you'll be your enemy what do you think of that does that sound family first <laughs> it doesn't sound very Christmassy hey okay? Spreading the Mary. But that's what Jesus said. See, there's the division. That's when people, when you see where they're at, straight away, oh, I don't believe that. Well, you know they're wide roaders. But a narrow road person, yeah, love it. Preach it to me, brother. Come on, feed me. That's it, you know. Love it. Just simple, straight to the point, honest, faithful. There's no double mindedness or sleazy. That's it. I got my name on there, you know. I'm not ashamed of that. That's it. I put my name on for that reason. Because I'm not some two faced Bible college minister. Let's say one thing to one person and something else to another. No, it's the same. I don't care if it's my wife, my children, you know, I don't care if it's Auntie Jack or Uncle Mary. Whether they're black, white, fat, skinny, whether they're unbelievers, believers, college genius, in the street, under the bridge, over the bridge over the top it's the same it remains the same yeah that's me that's what I believe that's can you show me where I'm wrong if, if you can show me where I'm wrong I'll throw them in the bin what do you reckon I, I'll throw the, all, the, 
the writings in the bin. Can you show me where I'm wrong? Show me. It better be scriptural, not just from you, out of some trash can, religious trash can. Show me. Show me the scripture that says I'm wrong. That's what I like. See, that's my strength. That my strength is the word. It's not biceps and triceps. You know, they're not too bad, I suppose. But the word is my strength. I'm not relying on that. You know? Pop, he goes, yeah. I'm not wasting my time in the gym. When I and just pull a piece out and I pop. I waste the time. I, I could be enjoying a cup of tea. Hey? Yeah, the blokes they're training. <laughs> Hang on up, I want to go to back. Um, <laughs> when it could be just pop, you know? If, if they're real about it, don't mess around with that. Never, never take boxing gloves to a gunfire, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that's, that's what I believe, you know? That's not it. If, if you're that way inclined, yeah, that's, you're going to move in that realm. But I move in the Jesus realm. And they say, well, whatever you're going to do, do it. Make it good. Because then the Lord's going to deal with you. <laughs> that's what he does. He said it's a righteous thing for him to trouble those who trouble his people. It's a righteous thing. So what's there to bother about? Especially at my age. Right? Feeling it, brother. I'm feeling it. So next week we go on to 66. We're on Route 66 next week. The Gap 66. The 65 today. Okay? We're in Psalm 119, 39 and 40. Revive me. Revive me. That's, and he's leading in the paths of righteousness in the right when he's leading. He's leading me in the right direction for his loving and affection. You know, when he's leading you there, you just, oh, you know? You feel his embrace. Right? You feel him riding beside you. I do. I feel him riding beside me when I'm right. Oh, he doesn't do that. Yeah. He said, I will never leave you. Unless he's on the boat. <laughs> eh? I will never leave you. Now he's within you. See? The world don't have that. They don't have anything within. They're empty. Hollow. And lost. Empty in it. This is like straw men, you know? Empty. That's why they're searching here and searching there. They're like the searchers, you know? They were one of our group back in their day, either, the searchers. Right? But that's it, they don't have it, they're, they're empty. Yeah, everyone been, oh, I'd done the empty bit. You know, like, oh, what was me? So I had to pick myself up by my shoelaces and go out and make merry. I have to make myself, chew myself up. You know? As the uh, deceased pedophile Jim Williams from the Assembly of God, as he would say, you got to take your gals out. Take them out, spend a bit of money on them. Listen, ginger nut. You know? <laughs> Listen, you predator. You need to chill. Get right with God. Oh, Jimmy Williams. Hey? Molesting little girls. And then he's got his mate, Frankie Houston. Molesting little boys. So they must have had a different tastes. Oh, don't judge. Let it go on. <laughs> Don't judge. We've got to let this go on. Don't, don't warn them. 
like Paul the Apostle did, he taught and warned. Listen, buddy. As when cars usually, they, if they cut me off, or they just about swing around the corner and overtop me, they stop and I go. <laughs> I give it, I wag the finger and, and I go. You naughty person. Give him the naughty finger, you know. We have to be told. If you can't be told, how are you going to teach? If you can't be told. Right? Just be told. And then you'll be useful. You'll be useful to the Lord. Right? So we give the glory to Jesus today. I thank you, Jesus, because I didn't know what to say today. But we just sort of went along, you know, and winged it again. Where the wind blows, no one knows, and so are they who are born of the Spirit, you know, when the wind goes. Uh, but it's, I like winging it, you know. It's interesting, it's exciting, it's very uh, Holy Ghosty. So thank you, Jesus. Everybody in the house said amen. amen. All right.